plumberparts.co.uk. Honest reviews and advice. Holla and welcome to today's plumberparts.co.uk video. Today we're going to have a look at insulating pipes and specifically outside pipes because if you can insulate successfully an outdoor pipe then you can pretty much do all the ones in your loft or under your floor that go to the radiators. Let's firstly have a quick think about why you insulate pipes. Firstly if they're outside it's to prevent them from freezing and also it's to create efficiency in the system. Say you've got some radiator pipes going under the floor or through the loft you don't want those pipes to be emitting heat into that area before they get to the radiator which is your heat emitter so you insulate those pipes to make the system a lot more efficient let's have a look at one of the worst insulating jobs i've ever come across shocking huh dreadful heinous disgusting tepid possibly some of the worst insulating I've ever seen. Right, so we've established that the insulating that's there at the moment is really not very good. It's pretty bad. There's pipes that are bare. All the gaffer tape that they've used to put on the insulation has come away. Also, the insulation they've used itself, called Climaflex, which is a silvery grey kind of substance, is not really suitable for being outside. It will survive for a year or two, but then it gets to the point where if you touch it, it just falls apart. What you actually have to use is another type, which in the UK we call Armaflex, which is black. It looks like this. This is Armaflex here. As you see, it's a lot more rubbery, a lot more spring, and also, very importantly, it's completely waterproof. To be honest, this is a very, very good insulation. I recommend you use this for indoor and outdoor applications. It is slightly more expensive, though. Also, when you're doing any kind of insulating, there's got to be a great way of actually fitting the insulation together. We use a special type of sellotape. It's insulating sellotape. It's water resistant. Uh, it can go outside, and it doesn't come off like gaffer tape does after a few years. But you can also use tie wraps if you don't tighten them up too far, because if you do tighten them up too much it will just cut into the insulation so there's many ways of attaching some insulation together let's have a look at the different ways of doing so an L joint and a T joint uh, nice and neatly and effectively so you don't lose heat and your pipes don't freeze so first up safely with a knife just cut away all the old insulation and uh, basically clear up the pipe so let's firstly have a look at this special joint here called a mitre joint that is when you have a piece of pipe coming up here and a piece of pipe coming across and you want to insulate those but have a nice neat mitre joint on there that you can tape up and look good and it will still insulate the pipe successfully. First thing we do is get yourself a small hacksaw or a small fine bladed saw like we've got here and cut your insulation. Now I always cut just a small piece that acts as a guide piece for how big you're going to be. Now you know because this guide piece sticks out that far you know exactly how much to cut off that width there. So we're going to cut off so it's nice and tight to about here. And just cut that nice and easy like that. Now what I do is marry these up together like that. Make sure you've got the slit on the side where you want it. Using this width here, you'll know that now you can cut a diagonal down there like so. So now we have our diagonal. So now we've got this in place, get ourselves some of this set of tape and just run that round here just to hold that in place nicely. Now we're going to join this piece that comes up here. Remember we've got our guide piece here for a width so we know exactly where to cut our mitre. Just remember if you've got any joints further down the pipe you need to take into consideration the length that you cut your insulation at. Okay? So I'm just going to cut another mitre on this, we'll pop this bit on there and then I'll show you how to tape up the mitre joint. So this piece just goes on here like so. Now before I show you exactly how to tape up this particular mitre joint, get yourself all your tape and just like you're wrapping Christmas presents, cut a load of lengths off all about five or six inches long so they're all ready for you to use. My first bit I always just put over the top like that. My next bit I put around the side just like that. I do the same on the other side. I do the same down just like that. And I do the same on the other side down as well. Now the pieces we've done so far are really important because they actually hold the joint together. The next bits I'll do is I'll get a, lo a longer piece and run a collar around there to make it look good and a collar around there to make that look good. So there you go, that's how you actually do a nice little mitre joint, how to cut it and how I usually tape it. You might find you've got different ways or better ways or anything like that. If you do, post them in the comments below so other viewers can see them and perhaps help them out. Now I'm going to show you how to actually do a T piece. These are really important. They're not very difficult but they just take five minutes of your time and uh, I'll show you how to do that with a bit of Climaflex. So now I'm just going to show you how to affect a good T piece joint just like this. Cut yourself quite a, a like a 45 degree cut like so and then another one just like that 
And yes, this does feel like Blue Peter. Right, so make sure you've got your slit pointing up, but this is actually where you want to make the cut. Just make a little mark there, that, and you've got your cut area. So now you've got your nick there, just lay this so it's just on the, over that nick just like that. Then with a small knife, just mark exactly where you want your cut to be, just like that. Follow that line in, just like so, just like that. Do the same again on this side. There you'll see there's a nice little small hole there for the pipe to stick out and that will connect in there like so, just like that. Then for the taping of it, just you have one piece that goes right over the top and then to make the joint good, go round and there you go. That's how you actually do a T-piece nice and successfully when you want to do pipe insulation. Now I know there's loads of different ways for people to do this. This is just the way I do it. I think it's effective, it works well and it's neat. Above all, it's, it's neat and it finishes the job off nicely. If you think we've missed anything out or we've done something wrong or you need more information, comment on this video or contact us directly through our channel. As ever, subscribe to our videos. They're really helpful and if you are interested in plumbing or DIY or anything like that, you're going to find some helpful information. Also, follow us on Twitter and Facebook where you'll be given up-to-date deals on plumbing products, etc. through the UK. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I'd love to see you all next week for another rip-roaring adventure in the world of plumbing. And you know what that could mean. Anyway, I'll see y'all later and hold tight throughout the night. Plumberparts.co.uk Honest reviews and advice. Insulated from the cold outside so they won't freeze. Same with all the panels on each side and on the top.